I have Samuel Falmain with me from Accurate. So Accurate is a company that put pricing on steroids. They use machine learning to do this and they get far better results than the traditional actuarial and linear kinds of models. But what's also interesting about what they do is unlike many machine learning models, their model is transparent. So it's able, you're able to see what, why it's doing what it's doing. So welcome. Lovely to have you here. So Thank you very much. We could start with you telling me a little bit about yourself. Oh, I, I'm, I'm Sam and I'm a CEO of Accurate. So Accurate is, a, is, a, is an intro tech, a startup that was uh, founded uh, in 2018. And as you mentioned, our expertise is uh, machine learning and AI applied to, uh, to insurance and especially to one specific use case, which is uh, insurance pricing. Excellent. And could you tell me maybe just, just for fun, a little known unusual fact about yourself? Oh, um, so an uh, unusual fact about myself, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe the fact that uh, my initial studies were uh, journalism, so quite far away from tech and, and insurance, and I kind of fall into tech by, by accident, uh, and I always remained in, in tech. <laughs> afterwards. So, uh, so that was funny. That was not what I expected when I started my studies, but uh, I'm quite happy there. Yeah. That's quite a, quite a leap from where you started. Yeah. When was the company founded? So the, the company was founded in 2018, but actually the, started, the, the project started earlier than, earlier than that. So uh, was about uh, 2016, mm -hmm. um, but starting from 2018, we have uh, joined an incubator, and we officially launched the, the the product and the solution on the market on in 2019. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, so so we had a quite long R&D phase mm -hmm. before being able to put the put the solution on on the market. That's mm -hmm. certainly one of the specificities of of the use case that we address. It's because. Uh, as you can imagine, pricing uh, in our industry, but that's the case in insurance, it's, uh, it's, it's a quite central uh, topic and the cost of mistake in insurance pricing is just huge. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a very high uh, product maturity before you can come uh, to the market. So that's why we had this very long uh, R&D phase uh, before officially starting the, the commercialization, which was a little more than one year ago. I think in, in the pharmaceutical industry as well, the consequences of making bad pricing can be yeah. very, very bad. There was a case quite a few years ago now, but where one of the companies overpriced a cancer treatment so badly that the oncologist took out a page in the New York Times to complain about it. So it can get yeah. very, very bad. Uh, so what kind of challenges did you have from 2016 to when you actually launched the product in 2019? Uh, so actually, yeah, the, the first big challenge, it, it no, no became our, our competitive differentiator and, and, and our IP. Uh, so when we started to address this, this problematic, we saw that uh, the, the pricing process within insurance is uh, it's heavily manual. Uh, it's driven by, by actuaries. Um, so it's quite manual, quite long, quite iterative. It's also error prone. It's uh, extremely slow. and and it seems to us to be a very good use case for AI mm -hmm. because uh, it's a process that is heavily data driven and it's manual. And typically, mm -hmm. uh, this is the sweet spot for AI solution, manual Absolutely. process with, <laughs> with a lot of data. But in that specific case, uh, when we started to, 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 to apply some out of the box machine learning algorithms, uh, we realized quite fast they were not applicable at all for this industry because, mm -hmm. as you know, uh, insurance is a in heavily regulated industry, such as, mm -hmm. such as yeah, pharma. Uh, yes. So you cannot, uh, you cannot afford to use uh, models that are black box, you know, mm -hmm. so models where you don't really understand uh, all the model was built and what, I, what, are the, what are the drivers. So mm -hmm. all those algorithms were not fitted for this use case. And this is also what gave us the idea of starting the company, but that was a big challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. it, in, in terms of R&D to us to see, would it be possible to create specific algorithms mm -hmm. that would allow to bring all the benefits of, uh, of machine learning uh, and automation on this use case, but mm -hmm. keeping full transparency and control on the models. And, and it took us lots of time. We, we worked in partnership with, uh, 
with academic labs uh, to, to build those algorithms. And we, we, we success, successfully build those. So uh, that, that's also uh, how, we, how we created the company. We are currently patenting them. They are totally unique uh, on, on the market. But that was a big challenge, and we didn't know when we started if we would be able to uh, to, uh, to to achieve this this result mm. of creating those kind of algorithms. I'm so pleased you did because it sounds like you've done some amazing work there. Okay, let's start with what kind of challenges your clients have before they come to you, and when they you know what are they asking for. So, if you look at the, the global context, there is. Kind of more and more pressure on insurance prices, and the pressure is driven by by multiple sources that can vary from one country to another. But basically, you you see that there are new new entrants on this market, uh, that there are more more direct players. You have price comparisons in websites that make the clients much more informed uh, than than before. Uh, you've got pressure from the regulator. Uh, you've got a you've got unplanned event like like recently the, the covid and so all of this pushes towards more sophistication on pricing but also towards much more agility because uh, the, the yeah insurance companies need to to to, to react faster mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's the problem with the current the current process it takes months uh, to build models or to update models so they do not have at all the required agility uh, to face with those uh, with those uh, challenges uh, so competition, uh, unplanned events, uh, challenges with the regulator, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 so that's that's why they really need to to increase the speed to market, and that's absolutely what we what we address. Wow, so that's an interesting point. So, what is the current speed to market when a when a client comes to you and starts? How long does it take to get the model working for them? Actually, it's quite it's quite it's quite fast. Recently, we we, we started with a with a new client, and on the, the the first day when when we when solution was deployed, started to build models. And uh, on the first day, he told us, "I did the work of three months in three hours." Wow. Uh, so the, the, yeah, so the impact is just uh, it's just huge because we we are we we are capable to automate all the all the the, the statistical part mm -hmm. of, of the work. Uh, of course, we are not automating 100% of, of the work mm -hmm. because uh, we still need the expertise. There are, there are always some area or, or some areas where there is not enough data, so you need human judgment. Mm -hmm. But we are going to automate 80 to 90% of the process, which is the, all the data-driven part. And, and we are going to let our client just focus on the, on the expertise-driven part. Uh, where the human is going to bring uh, its, its, its own value. So, so there is yeah, a huge impact in terms of, term of time to market. That's huge, huge. I mean, the same in the pharma, time getting to onto market and getting onto formularies with price, good pricing is a really critical factor because you can lose so much money each day that you're waiting. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not, of course, I talk a lot about speed to market, but it's not the, the only one. When, we, when you talk about automation, there is another, there are multiple effects, but another one that is very important is increasing the predictive power of the model. Mm -hmm. So as you, as you know, and this, this is one of the specificities of, of insurance, when you sell a product, you don't know its cost. If I sell you a car insurance, I don't know if you will, you're going to have three accidents next year or zero accidents. Mm -hmm. And so the better you can predict the cost of your portfolio, the, be the better you can manage your, your, your profitability. And nowadays, as you know, and it's the same in all industry, there are more and more data available. Yes. But the challenge when you are doing models manually is that if you are an actuary, yeah, I give you a new uh, database with a thousand variables and in, in this thousand variables there are maybe one or two that are highly predictive it's mm -hmm. extremely complex manually uh, to spot those two variables it, take, it can take months and so this is also a, a significant value that we can bring we can allow insurance companies to better leverage the new data sources available so that they can improve the predictive power of the model and in the end in translating to uh, increase their profitability it's very interesting so let's Focus on the data. So, what kind of data do you use within the insurance industry for this? So, the, the I would say the the basis the, the the basis is always to start with first of all uh, underwriting data. So, mm -hmm. all the data about uh, about the clients. 
and Klimt's data, so past history Klimt, uh, because this is what you are going to predict. So you need to discover based on the pattern of, of the past what will be the, the likelihood uh, to have a uh, to have, a, to have a claim for, for, for a new client and what, what will be the, the, the exposure, so the amount you think it, it will cost. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, so this is what we are trying to model. So, so the basis is start with internal data, mm -hmm. so claims data and underwriting data, but then you can enrich with, uh, with, with external data sources, data about geography, social demographic data, mm -hmm. uh, so there are lots of data, it can be weather data, there are lots of data that can that can be used and that can allow to better predict uh, the, the likelihood of uh, a claim for a claim. That's really interesting because you, we have obviously claims data in pharmaceuticals as well and we use that in many countries, you know, the US, Japan, all over the world. And so I can see that there's a lot of parallels. You've got the claims data, you could actually have um, clinical trial endpoints data where you're looking at how much better this drug is than what's already being claimed for by the competitors that don't have this extra edge in the efficacy, for example, or side effects. Um, yep. And then you can also potentially mix in um, personalized or anonymized patient data and get a lot more details about patients with that condition from medical record data um, that's anonymized. So there is a lot of interesting parallels, I think, in what you're yeah, doing yeah. and maybe one day you would be interested in expanding into <laughs> the pharmaceutical sector as well. Because I, I can see that, you know, if you worked with a pharma company, you probably would be able to get on top of that pretty easily because it's very, you know, regulated. It's got a lot of the same challenges that you're facing with the insurance clients. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I fully agree. And indeed, for the moment, we are focused on, on insurance, but. Uh... But of course, uh, when we when we created the, the IP, uh, we, we we had some uh, like brainstorming session where we, we said how oh, we could in the future better uh, valorize the, this IP uh, on other industries, mm -hmm. and we so we made some some interviews with multiple people from different industries, and uh, the number one industry spotted was the healthcare industry because mm -hmm. there is this this same the same the same need of mm -hmm. transparency. Uh, driven by, by 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 the regulation, so those models are, are pretty much uh, applicable, uh, and and the structure of, of models that are used in insurance pricing are also mm -hmm. already used uh, in 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 healthcare. So so uh, no doubt uh, healthcare would be uh, certainly of interest in, in the future, and yeah, we would be very interested to maybe to, to test the solution with the with the healthcare player and, and see. Uh, how close it can be to, to, uh, to a solution that would be uh, that could be used in this industry. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that there would be pharmaceutical companies who would love to try it, just to work with you and actually customize it for their, you know, for their for the industry and for their for them. So I think that's really interesting. So could you? Uh, could you tell me about a specific client and, and what specific results they achieved by switching from their traditional model to this model? Yeah, uh, so the, as I mentioned, there are, there are, diff there are very different drivers uh, and so uh, depending on the clients, what they want to achieve can be, uh, can be very, uh, very different. Mm -hmm. uh, I already mentioned as benefits like the the speed and the, and, and the increase uh, predictive power. Mm -hmm. uh, I can mention maybe uh, another another uh, another use case with a with a with a client uh, that is in uh, in South America. And mm -hmm. in in that case, their, their big challenge was that they have a very high turnover in the in the team, and they were building models uh, manually. But they had huge issues in terms of models governance. Uh, and so when something was built by, by an actuary uh, one year ago, I, if he left the company, nobody understands anymore uh, okay. what, uh, yeah, why he, he selected those variables, why we put this model into production. Uh, and so that, that, that was a, 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 real, a real issue for, for this company and they, they, they had some great uh, making errors that cost them a significant amount of money uh, because of that. And that's also one of the benefits of, of, of the solution is 
because we've got this this uh, this, this uh, automation, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that with the same input, the algorithms would always provide the same output, which is not the case for by for human being. If you give the three, <laughs> the three different actuaries, you will have three different models, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make sense because in the end there is one one model that is better than, than the other ones. Mm -hmm. So, so we really allow them uh, to. Uh, to, 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 to reinforce uh, the, the model governance and which allow to significantly reduce uh, the rate making errors uh, and, and so to maintain uh, yeah, pricing coherence uh, over, the, over the time. Very interesting. Pretty much I've covered most of, <laughs> most of them now. Well then, um, that made me think about something. So you said a client in South America. So you work very globally then. Where, whereabouts are your current clients? Where, where have you worked? What countries? Yeah. So, so first of all, maybe I didn't mention that, but uh, when I, I talk about insurance, uh, what we what we are covering, we are covering what is called PNC, so it's a property and casualty, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, all the personal lines, which would be typically your auto, home insurance, mm -hmm. as well as commercial lines. Uh, we also cover health. We are not doing life, but we are doing uh, health insurance mm -hmm. uh, in terms of scope. And geographically speaking, uh, the, what, what we what we saw quite rapidly is that the the way uh, insurance uh, are building models uh, for risks, uh, for for demand, and building the, the, this price, the, their price is pretty harmonized. Mm -hmm. the, the, they are using the same kind of structure. Would you be in the US, in Japan, in, in Europe, in South America? Uh, so, and there is no real need to localize the solution. There, there are differences, of course, between the countries, differences in terms of regulation, mm -hmm. but, but the users know uh, exactly if they cannot choose certain variables, like I don't know, the, the sex or the social demographic origin, mm -hmm. they, are, they are not going to use it in the models. Uh, so, so, uh, so there is no need to localize the solution. So from the start, we, we had more, I say, more than 90 percent of our pipeline that was outside of France, which is our home country. Mm -hmm. uh, so today we've got clients in in, uh, in America, Asia, and, and in multiple countries in, in Europe. We we opened this year uh, an office in, in London, mm -hmm. uh, and we are opening an office uh, in the U.S. Uh, in September this year in New York. Uh, so. We are, yeah, yeah. we are really starting the internationalization and we are looking forward to opening an office uh, in Asia in 2021. Fantastic, that's amazing. And so how is your pricing? Do you charge for getting the onboarding done and then is there a subscription model or what is your, your approach to pricing? Uh, so we are a software as a service company. Okay. Uh, so we, we, do not, we do not charge for the onboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we charge a subscription fee that includes uh, the onboarding, uh, the training, all the new features, the, the computing power, so there is no uh, hidden cost. Uh, and, and, and the cost actually is, is based on the, on the size of the insurer, so on the, on the, on the, on the turnover, on the, the revenue of the, the insurer. So that's, that's pretty scalable. We can work with large international groups, like yeah. for example, we are working with, uh, with AXA in many, many different countries, mm -hmm. as well as we could work with, uh, with a small insurer. So it's pretty scalable. Okay, very interesting. And so if someone was interested in use, using your sort of solution, what advice would you give them to think about before they came to you, if there's anything specific they should collect and do before they come to you? So um, I think that there is no there is no specific uh, no specific advice. We have no specific uh, requirements in terms of data. If the if the clients are already doing some models today, uh, they will be able to get with actuary. Uh, so there is no uh, no data specific data transformation required or anything like that. Uh, so what is what is important uh, is uh, is to especially when we run some pilots is to run pilots with the uh, users that are uh, open-minded mm -hmm. uh, that are willing because it's it's a change mm -hmm. so so for some people uh, it can be perceived as a as a, yeah, a machine that is going to do 90% of, the, of their job and for other people they see that indeed all the painful and uh, repetitive tasks can be automated and they can focus on the expertise driven part which is the most interesting part of the job mm -hmm. but, but that's, that's, a, that's a shift 
as usual in, in AI, we are not replacing the, the users, we are uh, empowering them, allowing them to spend more time on, on what, what makes the, 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 the value of their job, but it's always change management. So you need to, to have yes. users that are, that are willing to, uh, to see things in a, in a different way. Yeah, very interesting. Well, thank you so much. I found that fascinating and I'm sure all our members will as well. I think you are the future of pricing already. The future is here. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andre. And, and again, uh, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned, we would be uh, yeah, certainly interested in an exploratory phase uh, to get in touch with, uh, with a pharma company and see if it could be relevant in the future to uh, consider uh this industry as well so we are more than open for that excellent i'm sure you will get some people interested to at least talk to you about it and see you know how it would, they would move forward so thank you again for today and i look forward to seeing all the interesting developments in your company in the future thank you very much